Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and bank stocks are once again crashing after NYCB plunged 47% last week when it said it might not collect more than $800 million in property loans. I want to update you on the situation here, how bad this renewed bank crisis could get, and the five bank stocks you should be watching for a turnaround. This one's going to be a shorter video, so I want to get right into it. If you want to see more of these shorter briefs, uh, market briefs, stocks to buy videos, let me know in the comments and tell me which stocks you want me to cover. First though, a special announcement. I'm relaunching our custom portfolio tracker with a 33% discount only with the link below in the description. This is so much more than just a stock portfolio tracker where you put in your stocks and how much you paid. It's going to tell you the sector, the industry, and the return on each stock. And it's even going to show you how much of your portfolio you have in each stock. You can put two stocks in here, compare them side by side, as well as against sector averages in 10 critical measures for stock analysis. The spreadsheet is going to download all this data directly from the internet, so you get, always get up-to-date information. Here in the Investing Goals tab, you can put in your age, years until you want to retire, and how much you invest each month. The spreadsheet is going to do the work for you. Use your current portfolio, past returns, and how you invest to estimate exactly how much you'll have when retirement comes around. This is a complete stock portfolio and financial goals spreadsheet. And again, I'm relaunching it with a 33% discount. You're going to get lifetime access to any updates here, videos on how to use it, and how to reach your goals. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below with a special relaunch discount code, so check that out. Back to our main topic though, and real estate has gotten crushed by the Fed's fastest rate hikes in 40 years. We can see here in the NARI data that real estate stocks fell 25% in 2022, and while that overall they closed marginally higher by the end of last year, office property has continued to crash, falling 37% in 2022 and another 17% last year. And of course, the problem here, not only have those higher interest rates destroyed property values, but office demand is still only about 60% of what it was pre-pandemic, and it's never going to get back to that level. Since commercial property leases are usually three to five years long, that means it's a slow melt lower for the sector as tenants gradually drop or renegotiate their leases from 2020 and onwards. Now for the banks, the pain started last year when because of those rising rates, banks had to mark down the value of their bond and loan portfolios. Now remember, when rates go up, the value of a bond goes down. So those investments held by the banks, the bonds and loans, which for a bank, loans issued are like bonds because they pay that fixed rate and the regular coupon payments. Those all took a hit last year and bank stocks crashed 45% in the first five months of the year. Now what's happening now is a little different but still related to that. Because of those higher interest rates and the plunging property values, a lot of commercial property owners are just letting the banks have the property instead of refinancing. Now higher rates have sunk cash flows on rents and drove property values lower. So there's just no point refinancing at higher, higher rates, especially these office properties. Banks have been building up their loan loss reserves, the cash account that they set aside for, that, for those cash loans defaults, but evidently not by enough. New York Community Bank Corps, ticker NYCB there, shocked everyone last week when, when it increased its cash reserves account by 345%. They had to move another $646 million into that loan loss provisions from just $187 million in the prior quarter. Besides saying that it might not be able to collect on that additional $650 million in loans, the bank also took a write down. So just said, okay, you know what? These two loans, this $185 million on two loans, it's probably not going to collect anything on those. Now, the broader regional bank ETF, the KRE here, sank almost 9% last week on, on the fear that this problem is going to extend to other banks and lead to another crash just like last year. But I think the problem here at NYCB isn't as bad across the entire sector and that could create opportunities if you know what to look for. I want to start here with a chart I found from BBAE Research showing regional banks' exposure to commercial real estate loans. So understand, these aren't all office properties here in these loans, but most real estate is hurting. So we're going to look at the big picture here, and you can see these top five, including NYCB, all have more than half of their total loan book values, those total loan books that they have, in real estate. For NYCB, it's 61% of its loan book. That's over $50 billion in property loans. So you can imagine if real estate loans defaults just edge up even 2%, that could wipe out nearly a billion dollars in book value, just depending on how much the bank is able to recover by selling those properties. Of course, there are a lot of details at work here, including the percentage of the office properties in those loans, uh, the regional exposure, as well as much, how much banks can recover in just a fire sale of these properties. The big coastal cities like New York, San Francisco, they're seeing the worst of the decline in those office properties, but a lot of the banks are extending their loans out to property owners instead of forcing that refinancing. So there is an element of kind of kick the can down the road here. But if you scroll down on this chart, it does give you a sense of which banks might be safer bets. 
And part of this is just a matter of size too, though. Giant banks like US Bancor here with its $387 billion loan book is gonna have less as a percentage in commercial property just because it's so massive. You can see here the average commercial real estate percentage here for the bottom seven is less than 13% exposure. But we do see that some of the safer stocks have still sold off over the last week, leaving them attractive in a price to book value basis. First, we're gonna look at KeyCore, ticker KEY, fell as much as 9% last week before recovering some towards the end of the week, but still trades for just 1.1 times on a price to book value. Now that's above the discount we saw in March crash last year, trading at just 0.73 times book value, but it's still a 26% discount to the 1.5 times valuation at the end of 2022. And Key pays a solid 5.7% dividend while you wait. Now, before we talk about those next four bank stocks, I do want to say something about the book value, price to book value for a bank. Often we talk about price to earnings or price to sales for stocks as those valuation multiples, how to value a stock. Here for banks, you want to use that price to book value just because of the way that banks put their loans and their deposits on their balance sheet as assets and liabilities. They mark these to market or show the market value of a lot of these. It gives you a very good picture of the actual book value the actual business value on the balance sheet for these banks. So it's a very good measure, much better measure than price to earnings or price to sales for financials for bank stocks. So that's why I'm using the price to book value here for these. Obviously, you know, any kind, anytime you can get a bank stock for less than its book value, that's a very good indication. You also want to measure it against uh, its historical earning or historical price to book valuation. So that average there, obviously a stock now trading at 1.5 times price to book looks very expensive. And unless you see that, you know, in the past, it's always traded at two or three times book value, which doesn't usually happen, but just as an example. Uh, on the other hand, a stock trading for 0.9 times price to book value seems very cheap, but if that stock always trades for 0.9 times price to book or even lower, 0.8 times price to book value, um, you know, just investors don't really see as much value in this company or in this bank, then it's not quite the uh, not quite the great deal you think it is. So you always com want to compare the price to book value, uh, just the absolute where it is, 0.9, 1, 1.5, wherever that might be. But you also want to compare it against other banks and against its own historical price to book value. Next up, U.S. Bank or ticker USB, it's the largest regional bank in the U.S. with over 657 billion dollars in assets. And in fact, this is the fifth largest bank in the U.S. That really doesn't make it a, a regional bank for me, but hey, it's labeled a regional bank. The size gives it the flexibility and with just 14% of its loan book in commercial property, it's in no trouble here. You're not getting as much of a discount here with its price trading at about 1.3 times book value, but that is still a 20% lower than the 2022 multiple that it saw in last year. Uh, stock pays a 4.8% dividend for it. Regions Financial, ticker RF, is the smallest bank here on this list at just $152 billion in total assets, $98 billion in loans there, and less than 14% of that in commercial property loans. It's, so it's gonna be fine here, though investors are worried about these smaller banks and sold it off as much as 10% last week. That also means you're getting one of the best discounts here at a price of just 1.07 times its book value. That is a 28% discount to the 2022 valuation on top of that 5.25% dividend yield. Also here, Huntington Bank shares, ticker HBAN, wasn't affected as much by the crash last week. It only sold off about 7.7% on the news, but it clawed back most of that by the end of the week. This is another small bank with just 13.5% of that $121 billion loan portfolio in commercial property. There's no trouble here unless the sell-off starts hitting residential loans as well. Along with regions, the valuation here is among the lowest in the group at 1.08 times book value, but Notice the stock only got up to about 1.36 times in 2022. So while the valuation looks lower here, it's still only about a 20% discount. We still got that safest bank stock on the list and how I think this all plays out. But if you like dividends here, you're gonna love the dividends in this video, the seven best dividend stocks for 2024. So make sure you check that out next. PNC Financial Services, ticker PNC, does more of those financial services than these other banks. So it was only down about 4% last week. It's a large bank, but only 11% of its loan book is in commercial property. So definitely not a problem here. It's also the smallest discount though. Now trading at 1.15 times its book value, it's about a 15% discount to that 20 22 valuation of 1.36 times. Uh, but if you're looking for safety and a 4% plus dividend, this one is it. Again, I do think last week's shock made this out to be more than it should be. And some of these hardest hit bank stocks like NYCB could be good bets on a recovery play. All the banks are building up their cash reserves. And once we see those interest rate cuts start mid-year, that's going to go a long way to supporting valuations for property. 
even as that demand stays low for office space, lower rates is going to help support property values, going to help lift those across the real estate. So it's going to mitigate some of these damages. Also with those lower rates, we're going to see the bond portfolios for these banks increase in value, kind of a reverse of what we saw last year heading into that bank crisis. So that's also going to be supportive as well. Do not miss that 33% relaunch discount on our portfolio and stock tracker with the exclusive link below or click on the video to the right for some outrageous 2024 predictions and the stocks to buy now. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.